listen for it, but not a lot of economists are saying it. But listen for it. There are a few economists out there on on the on the ether saying, well, all these tariffs that Trump is is putting on, you know, these different countries doing all this, it's going to have big economic consequences for the U.S. and for the rest of the world, and potentially some places maybe even might cause a depression, maybe even a recession. Maybe we could be looking at a Trump session, a, a tariff session. They don't know. The world has been steadily, steadily going on into more open, more trade. And tariffs have been getting lower and lower because countries have not really found that the tariff improves or, or, or improves you know, trade. Instead, what they have been more focused on is opening up markets looking at regulations this is why the eu is considered to be a superpower when it comes to these things you will often hear them referred to as a regulatory superpower because so many countries have to do business because it's such a big market you have to follow their regulations anyway so why not even ad adopt some of these regulations yourself so that it makes trade easier with them but tariffs of course are completely different beast because you are almost paying then in a way to have to enter a country and then because you have to pay that extra amount well now i'm going to put the price of my goods up to sell in that country so if you are an importer of goods from as we've just found out canada or mexico the us's largest trade partners um You've just found out yesterday, Trump has said there is going to be a 25% tariff on Mexico and Canada. Canada's thinking, what have we done? <laughs> yeah, what have, what have we done? Mexico, on the other hand, is like, um, what? <laughs> what, what? What's going on here? So already, already you are probably seeing the seeds of this trade war to come because this is what this is going to spark it is going to spark a big 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 trade war and these consequences are going to ripple around the globe um that is for certain that is absolutely for certain on this so before we get more into this uh please do like i say click the like click the share button down below, there are, again, links to my Patreon page, the Buy Me Coffee link, where you can all buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and, of course, there's the Pony Club down below as well. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let's crack on, then, into this. So, this comes from The Guardian with the title of Trump Vows a 25% Tariff on Mexico and China, uh, sorry, on, I'm sorry, Mexico and Canada, and a deeper tariffs on China. So, Donald Trump has said... He will sign an executive order imposing a 25% tariff on all products, all products coming into the United States from Mexico and Canada, and additional tariffs on China once he becomes U.S. president again. So this isn't specific like products like we saw with the, the steel tariffs last time around. No, this is... This is, <laughs> like, all, all goods. <laughs> anyway, Trump had this to say. On the 20th of January, as one of my many first executive orders, I will sign an all necessary documents to charge Mexico and Canada a 25% tariff on all products coming to the United States and its ridiculous open borders. Um, I, I just don't even know what, what, what to say in response to that, but yeah, you are going to see a trade war. You are going to see a huge trade war break out on this. And as some people have said, sometimes these tariffs, once you put them up, it's difficult to lower them because economies adjust. So we saw, of course, the steel tariff 
that is still in place. Even though Biden said he wanted to get sort of rid of it, you can't just take away the tariff. You know, the tariff originally was going to be sort of in talks, hopefully during the Kamala administration, where they were going to be sort of lowering the tariff year by year so the economy could have time to adjust so you don't just get rid of it. But now the exact opposite is happening. Were you coming in? And trust me, I think lots of U.S. manufacturers are panicking like crazy today on this. I'm going to go and try. I'm going to go and try and find some reporting on this of what U.S. manufacturers are thinking of this. I think they are absolutely wetting themselves uh, in this. So Trump said that these tariffs would remain in place until the two countries clamp down on drugs, particularly fentanyl, and people crossing the border illegally. Um, is Trump going to end the war on drugs then? Because that would be a, a big step uh, to helping end that. But never mind on that one. Anyway, in a follow-up post, because of course there's a follow-up post, Trump also announced that the US would be, quote, charging China an additional 10% tariff uh, above any additional tariffs on all of their many products coming to the United States of America. He said the reason for this additional tariff was China's failure to curb the number of drugs entering the U.S. China is, of course, a major producer and a precursor of chemicals that are acquired by drug cartels, including in Mexico, to manufacture fentanyl, a highly potent synthetic opioid. I have had many talks with China about the massive amount of drugs, uh, in particular fentanyl, being sent to the United States, but to no avail. Until such a time as they uh, as they stop, we will be charging China an additional 10% tariff above any additional tariffs on what the many products will be coming into the United States. So he said 60%. So is that then a 70% tariff we are looking at on China? Jesus. Um. <laughs> that is going to have massive consequences and particularly on China's economy as well. Um, and if China's economy once again starts to wobble, that could have a big domino effect on, on many other economies throughout the world as well. So it's not going to be good. In response, China warned, no one will win a trade war. And they are right on that. Uh, Liu Pianang, a uh, Chinese uh, embassy spokesperson said that China ha had taken steps to combat drug trafficking in an agreement that he reached last year with Joe Biden. Uh, the Chinese side have notified the U.S. side of the progress made in the U.S. related law enforcement operation against narcotics, he said in the statement. All these would provide the idea of China unknowingly and, of course, um, allowing fentanyl per uh, persecutors to follow to flow into, of course, the United States runs completely counter to facts and reality. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the Trump presidency um, at 2.0, where facts and reality just don't matter. Canada's deputy prime minister, uh, Christina Freeland, released a statement on Monday saying that the country had placed the highest priority on border security and the integrity that it shared with the border with the US. Trump and the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spoke on Monday night about the trade and border security. Reuters reported citing a Canadian source directly familiar with the situation. Freeland's statement did not, however, mention the tariffs directly. It also said the Canadian Border Service and the US Drug Enforcement Administration and US Customs and Border Protection work together every single day to disrupt the scourge of fentanyl coming from Canada and other countries. Bill Ackman, the chief executive of New York-based hedge fund, uh, uh, Fed hedge fund, Pershing Square Capital Management, said on Twitter, Donald Trump is going to use tariffs as a weapon to achieve economic and political outcomes which are in the best interest of America, fulfilling his America first policy. This is, of course, a great way for the Trump now to affect foreign policy changes even before he takes office. Um, Yeah, no, this is this is an incredibly bad way. Because even then, what happens to the fentanyl? This probably makes it even more expensive. People may then switch to or look for cheaper alternatives. Um, you know, supply and demand and all that. This will probably create even a more profitable black market for fentanyl coming into uh, into America. Uh, you know, 
<laughs> to say that you're going to use tariffs to try and enforce uh, economic and political outcomes is ridiculous. What you should be instead be doing is crafting good policy. But of course, this is Donald Trump we're talking about here. Uh, the dollar rose to its highest level since January against China's yuan as markets now reacted to Trump's comments, uh, increased by almost 2% against the Mexican peso and hit a four and a half year high against the Canadian dollar. Most Asian stock markets declined, as did European shares, of course, in early trading. The mood amongst German exporters did improve slightly, of course, this month. Despite the threat of new U.S. tariffs, the Ipso Economic Institute's indicator for export expert expectations rose to minus 5.9 points in November from minus uh, 6.5 in October, the first increase in six months. Companies, of course, very unsettled, but are still actually waiting to see which trade policy Trump will actually ultimately implement. Um, yeah, chaos. Klaus Wolhob, the head of the EFO survey, said, in addition, the dollar has appreciated strongly since the election, which may, of course, benefit exporters. While on the campaign trail in October, Trump described tariffs as the most beautiful word in the dictionary and made clear his intentions to reduce U.S. Uh, to reduce US companies' use of foreign goods and parts by raising their cost. He campaigned on pledges to raise costs to, to raise tariffs to 60% for all goods imported from China and 20% for those brought in from the rest of the world. The policy, he said, would strengthen U.S. international trade position and boost U.S. job growth. Uh, no, of course, Economist agrees uh, with Trump on that. <laughs> no, um, like, uh, no Economist believes on that at all. Um and then you've got this, the Peterson Institute for Economic Affairs, a nonpartisan Washington, D.C.-based organization, said that Trump's proposed tariffs would cost the typical U.S. household more than $2,600 a year. And then this is, this is the other one. I said, watch out for who Trump was going to pick for this, and he's the exact person we were talking about. Trump's proposal comes just as a couple of days after he picked a hedge fund manager, Scott Bresson, to be his treasury secretary, a move that many on Wall Street executives now believe signals his willingness in at least to moderate his approach to tariffs. <coughs> it's almost as if Trump wants to remind markets who is control after nominating Scott Bresson as treasury secretary, a man expected to, of course, cool cool Trump's potency, said Matt Simpson, a senior marketer for the City Index, who told Reuters. Um, yeah, and if he doesn't do what Trump wants him to do, Trump will get rid of him and put someone else in who will. Um, yeah, this is going to be um, disastrous. I think you're going to get a trade war with the US against many companies, against many things. No one is going to win. Um and it will be a disaster for for many economies around the world. But hey, economics things will things will change. Things will things will go probably crazy for a while. Things will be a lot more expensive. That's for sure. Um, probably for at least a while. But yeah, this this is going to go crazy. I cannot believe he's going to sort of go and pursue on this. Um, but he will go crazy. He will go crazy on these tariffs. And then, as we said at the beginning, once you've got a tariff in place, sometimes it's hard to bring it down. And it's almost as if Trump is saying to the world, come to me for a trade deal. I, I think that is secretly his plan. I think that's part of the reason for all these tariffs is to try and get countries to come and bend the knee to America to get some sort of favorable trade deal. Seems like that's his plan behind the scenes. Whether it'll actually work out like that, of course, that's another question entirely. Economists vastly disagree that that is what is potentially going to happen here. So ultimately, of course, we'll see what happens. But oh boy, you know, we are counting down to the Trump presidency. And we will probably see very quickly what happens on a wide range of issues of what madness we're going to see this time around. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.